Hello, welcome to episode number 542 of the TBA to 8 Way Challenge Run. We're here for uh, SmackDown or week 3 of June 2024. And yeah, we are set for the next qualifiers for the um, Money in the Bank ladder matches. The men's match qualifier will be Andrade, Johnny Gargano, and Tyler Breeze in a triple threat match. The women's will be Raquel Rodriguez, Yoko Uihara, and Zelina Vega. And the tags will be the Labyrinth against Out the Mud against Creed Brothers. And we've got a whole lot more in store for today as well. So without any more further ado, let's have a straight into the show. <clears throat> Swerve comes to the ring to open the show. He says, so, you know, <laughs> last week was a bit of a show, right? You know, you got Bobby Lashley, you got Daniel Bryan, these two egomaniacs who can't really coexist. They're trying to leave their own little groups around here. And I took advantage of that, and look what happened. Bobby's boys lost because of me. But Bryan, he didn't win the night either, because Bryan ended the night on his ass too. Because this is what happens when you got not one, but two challengers gunning for your championship. You know, they say you gotta have eyes in the back of your head, I've got eyes in all directions. Okay. I'm the World Heavyweight Champion for a reason. I proved at Clash of the Castle why I'm the World Heavyweight Champion. Because I'm the best damn professional wrestler on this planet. And Daniel Bryan may think otherwise. Bobby Lashley may think he, he outstrengthens me. But that's not the case. Because it doesn't matter how tough you are, Bobby. You ain't got what it takes to be champion. You've been here, what? 20 years? You ain't never won the big one. Bryan, it took you so long to win it. But then injuries kept taking it from you. You've won this championship, but have you ever really held it? I didn't think so. <laughs> so here's what we're gonna do. Money in the bank. I'll defend this championship against Daniel Bryan and Bobby Lashley in a triple threat match. Lashley and MVP come out. And he goes, man, shut your dumb ass up. You'll listen here, Swerve. You have only held on to your World Heavyweight Championship for as long as you have because you keep ducking the almighty Bobby Lashley. You see, the Hurt Business is booming right now. And last week, we've still got to pay you back for getting involved in our business and costing us a shot at those WWE Tag Team Championships. Okay? And I see you in there all alone. Your boys are in competition later on tonight. So how about we go in there, we deliver our message personally, and the only way the Hurt Business knows how. Swerve just drops his belly. He's like, come on, bring it. Daniel Bryan then comes out. He goes, enough. Enough of all this ruckus. MVP, why must you always resort to violence? Okay, and sure, there's tough love in the dojo around where I am. That's, that's strengthening and making the best damn wrestlers I possibly can. You have got hurt business in your name because all you want to do is hurt. Okay, you're ruffians. You don't deserve to be anywhere near my tag team championship. But Swerve... You and I have had a rocky relationship these last few weeks. We don't see either why we never will. But what I see is a man who's holding a piece of gold that I want and the money in the bank. I'm going to take it. But for now, you say you, say you your hurt business are going to deliver the message of pain, MVP. How about tonight in our main event, myself and Pete, the WWE Tag Team Champions, will team with the World Heavyweight Champion, Swerve Scott. I guess you three idiots. And he goes, man, I, I thought you were never going to ask. You're on. So yeah, tonight, six-man tag main event. Swerve, Brian, and Pete Dunne against the Hurt Business. And then, of course, at Money in the Bank, triple threat match announced. The third triple threat world championship match at Money in the Bank. Um, I've just, I noticed that, like, as I was setting up the card, building towards Money in the Bank, I'm like, hey, I've got three triple threat matches. But they all naturally sort of fell into place, so it's fine. None of them really feel forced. And they cut to the GM's office, and Nick Osgo, did you just hear that? You know, six-man tag main event, triple threat match at Money in the Bank, you know, big matches coming up soon. Next week's going to be a big show. Pierce goes, indeed it is. And speaking of next week being a big show, in walks Dakota Kai, she goes, you wanted to see me? Pierce goes, yes, Dakota. You see, next week, SmackDown is the season finale. Okay, we're promising a big show to us partners, you know, if, if anything, it's more of a responsibility to be on next week's show than it is even our money in the bank. So next week, you're going to be defending your Women's World Championship. And I'll leave it, even leave it up to you 
to find a challenger tonight if you can. But here's the kicker, okay? There's no giving championships out to Tegan or Piper or Candice. And Kaka goes, I I'm open for a challenge against anybody. In fact, I'll leave it open. Whoever whoever dares challenge me for the championship, I'll face them. And next week, I'll, de I'll defend this championship the only way I know how, and that's by kicking people's heads off and retaining. 88 rated opener. Um, it is the second Money in the Bank qualifying match for SmackDown. Their men's side, even. And it is Andrade who picks up the win, pinning Tyler Breeze with the Hammerlock DDT in 1722. <laughs> I'm just laughing because I've just seen the overall ratings. Um, I gave Tyler Breeze a new gimmick. Unlike the last show he was on. I think it was last week's SmackDown. And it went from adequate to very good. And now he's scoring an 89 in ring performance. Holy shit. Where did that come from, buddy? Tyler Breeze scores an 89, an 89 also for Andrade, and a 78 for Gargano, who was the weak link here. But, yes, Andrade does win. He is the man heading to Money in the Bank. He will join, well, on the SmackDown side, he will join Ilya Dragunov as well as Adam Cole, Austin, no Austin, Solo Sokoa, uh, Chad Gable, and Jay White in that match with three spots left. You know, on Raw next week, going to have the final qualifier taking place between Damian Priest, Logan Paul, and Xavier Woods. ECW's qualifying next week is between uh, a mystery person, Cesaro, and Alistair Black. And SmackDown's next week is between... And SmackDown's last match next week is Jacob Fatu against Angel Garza against Pete Dunne. Okay, so, you know, I'm a fucking idiot because I am, you know, completely forgot. You know, I knew this rule would end up shooting myself in the foot at some point um from here and every other time i mention next week's smackdown mind the bank qualifier um i say pete dunn's in the match with jacob fatu and angel gaza um it's not until i just literally sat right here on the booking screen as i'm recording this from the future that uh, i remember pete dunn's actually a former world champion so he can't actually be in the qualifiers he only held it for five minutes but it counts so uh yeah in the future, just know every time that I say Pete Dunn's in the match, I mean Ronnie Hughes of the Hurt Business. We then see Pretty Deadly with Tonya Breeze and Brooks Jensen backstage. You know, they're getting ready for the the Money in the Bank match, you know. Yes, boy, you know, that Money in the Bank briefcase, that first ever tag team Money in the Bank briefcase, I don't care what other five tag teams they put in it, because none of them will look as good as we do with it. And once we get that briefcase, you're down, right, we're going to make it our own. It's going to be just as beautiful and gorgeous as we are. And Tonya Breeze goes, yeah, that is, boys, you know, we're getting you ready now, your pre-Money in the Bank photo shoots, next time we get these done, you're gonna be Mr.'s Money in the Bank. And then Brooks Jensen in the makeup, like, they're in, like, the makeup chairs and shit. And he smells, and he goes, what's that smell, guys? And he looks around, he sees, like, a bottle of, a bottle of fragrance on the desk, he goes, fragrance? Whose is this? Then cut back to a dark room, you know, can we just see like a black room, like we're from the back of the television, we just see like the lights flashing out from the back of the TV. And then like the camera pans around and it shows Neville just sat in the dark room on a chair watching it. And what he's watching is footage from TakeOver Our Revolution, where Sami Zayn beat him to win the NXT Championship. And like he's replaying the free count on loop. Because all week, Sami, since last week when we made our match official for Money in the Bank in Montreal. I can't get this out of my head. You beat me that night and you took my championship. A man that I respected back then. That's barely the same Sami Zayn that I see now. That Sami Zayn would be embarrassed about the career you've led. But it's okay, Sami. Because you've got your family in your corner, right? You've got your friends. I don't have any friends. I just have this championship and I'm damn sure not gonna let you embarrass me again 83 rated match apparently there was a lack of psychology but Candice got 92 and Shayna got 80 so yeah just a, just a nice match Candice gets the win 1130 you know she's racking up wins you know she set her sights on challenging Rhea Ripley for the Liberty Championship but Rhea's too busy with Kim McQueen right now yeah, 92 for Candice, 80 for Shayna. Pretty good match, all things considered, considering there was a lack of psychology. We then cut to the Chase U classroom. 
yeah. Got Hams, Thea, Haley, Shane, Duke, and Bodie in there in the classroom. You know, Duke comes in, you know, slacking off, you know, filling around with a pen, you know, swing on the back of his chair like, you know, naughty kids do. And Thea's pacing around the front, going, Why is Mr. Chase so late? Where's Keith? Why is, where's Keith not here to sub in? Why is Mr. Chase so late? Where are they? You know, I've got to mind the bank qualifying next week. I really need to go over my strategy for next week. You know, Hams and Morgan have got a tag team match next week for the titles. They're, they're not even here either. Where's Morgan, in fact? Where's Morgan? And then she walks in, she goes, and this is the classroom where, you know, Mr. Chase teaches us all the history of wrestling and, you know, all the strategies. And then the two girls she's with are like, oh, yeah, yeah. And Thea goes, um, who are these? And Morgan goes, hey, they're, they're my friends. I'm showing them around, you know, they're interested in joining Chase University at some point. And then <laughs> Bodie goes, wait, Morgan has friends? Because of course I have friends. You know, Do you think I didn't have friends? And Thea goes, well... I don't think Mr. Chase would let your friends here into the classroom. And then Shane Reynolds sort of probably goes, whoa, you know, chill, you know. These two are always welcome here whenever they want to be. And Duke just rolls his eyes, goes, Tuh. what a mess this entire institution is. Somebody needs to grab this by the balls and set it straight. And then cut back. Tegan and Piper are with Kayla. And he goes, ladies, next week it'll be you two defending your women's tag team championships against Chase Hughes, Morgan Daniels, and Hams Katana of DKE, you know. Not a, not a established tag team around here, two, two young up-and-gummers, but, you know, not somebody to take lightly. And Tegan goes, you know, we, we we have been in that spot, okay? I know what it's like to be put in a championship match where they all think, hey, you're not going to win it. Now, you know, I did that against Sasha Banks two years ago, and look what happened. I became the SmackDown Women's Champion. Hell, we did that on sa last Saturday at Clash of the Castle two weeks ago when I beat the Women's World Champion, okay? But you're right, I, I like what I see from those girls in Chase U. I don't know what Andre Chase is doing though over there, but, you know, he's teaching good good basics to, to these students and, you know, next week is not going to be an easy fight even though they are rookies. That's when Candace sort of walks past. She goes, hey, are you finished here? Or are you? And they go, yeah, we're just wrapping up. Candace takes the back and goes, you know, Kayla, I, I was just thinking... You know, Rhea, when Kim McQueen called her out on NXT or on ECW, she was there, okay? Like, the very next week, she responded, and she went, yes, I'll, I'll go and see what that's about. Do you see Rhea Ripley here on SmackDown? No, the answer is no, okay? Could it be because Rhea Ripley's busy? Possibly. Could it be because Rhea Ripley is scared of me? No. No, it definitely couldn't be because Rhea Ripley's scared of me. Could it? Because look at me and look at Rhea Ripley. Like, she's twice my size. She wouldn't be scared of me, would she? Well, you can see for yourself the fact that she's not here again this week. And Dakota Kai does walk into frame and she goes, Hey, you know, I just... You know anybody who might want a world championship match next week? And they go, Well, yeah, me, I pinned you at, at Clash. And Dakota goes, Oh, well, actually, it can't be you, you know. Pierce and Aldous had this weird thing where like, I couldn't pick one of you guys. And then Kat's like, well, so who's it going to be? And Dakota goes, I don't know. I think I'm going to leave it up to chance, you know. And Piper steps in and goes, that's a great idea. I think Katana Chance has really, you know, proven her worth recently, so she does deserve a shot. <laughs> you sort of look at Piper. She goes, what? She goes, never mind. Huh? And then he will sort of disperse. <laughs> and they cut to Gorilla. Lucian Price, Bronco Nima get ready for their match when Lord Bando is there with them. And he goes, okay, boys. A more serious talk today. You see, the World Heavyweight Champion Swerve Scott, he's really pissed right now. Because we brought you guys into Mogul Affiliates because we thought you were better than Hit Row. And all you've done is show up and embarrass the World Heavyweight Champion. So for your sakes, I really, really want to win tonight. And then Bronco and Lucia are like, yeah, you know, we'll get it done. Uh, they don't get it done. <laughs> um, it is the Labyrinth who qualify. Uh, they pin Bronco and Nima once again. It was the same rookies who pinned them in their debuts that Swerve got pissed off at. Pin them again here tonight with the Sacred Stones. Um, obviously, the Creed brothers are taken out by the Cyclone, allowing the Labyrinth to score the pin on one of the OTM boys to join the tag team Wind the Bank ladder match. 
33 for Bronco Nima, 36 for Lucian Price, 67 for Nathan Kelly, 59 for Drake Chambers, 67 for Julius Creed, and a 79 for Brutus Creed. Yeah, nice. So we've got one spot left in that match, and that'll be determined on Raw next week in that three-way tag team match. But then after the match, you know, we cut to the announcers, you know, just going over what we just saw, you know, running down the money in the bank. But William Regal snatches Michael Cole's headset. He goes, I guess it's even now. I can't even sit here and be angry. Ricochet Bronson, you did exactly what we did. Bravo, boys. But the difference between you and us is that when we do it, we were making a message. When you do it, you were signing a death warrant. My boys will see you next week. And he drops the mic. So yeah, you know, Regal can't really be pissed because, you know, the Creeds did the exact same thing to the Cyclone last week. And he knows that. If anyone knows about being a villain, it's William Regal. He low-key respects what happened. But yeah, he can't sit back and take that fucking shit. <laughs> we then see Randy Orton. You know, he's got a ba- he's got his bag on his back. He's carrying his he's in his gym clothes. You know, he's on his phone, like walking towards the gym. He goes, "I'm now on my way in." He opens the door and he immediately like drops his bag on the floor in shock. To says to the, his eye, his eyes wide and his mouth open. And then Ilya Dragunov's there. You know, doing Ilya Dragunov workouts, ho- holding weights as he does chin ups and shit. Randy goes, "What the hell did I just walk in on?" Then Ilya just immediately like stops and goes, "Hey, Randy, nice for you to show up." I'm training for money in the bank. Randy goes, are you sure? Because it looks to me like you're training for nuclear war. And he goes, no, 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 you see, this is how my how I train, you know. This helps build my intensity and my desire to become world heavyweight champion. Those other eight guys, you ain't going to know what hit them. And Randy goes, I'm, I'm sure. Are you going to know what hit you if you can take all this shit? And he goes, there's only one way to find out. And then he hands Randy a big weight. And then, you know, Randy tries it. And, you know, he eventually does start training. You know, he gets he gets a serious train on. You know, Ilya Dragunov's training routine is so intense that it even wears out Randy Orton, of all people. Carmelo Hayes. You know, he's in, he's in his barber. Getting a haircut again. Because can you believe this guy? Okay, there's this guy at work. Okay, I know, I know, I know you're tired of people coming in around about work, but I've got something again. There's this guy at work, right? Okay, and he thinks he's this hot shit. Okay, all he's been his entire career is number two to some other guy, right? That other guy, he went on to climb the ladder and he became uh, the tippy top. Of course, he did it at the expense of myself, so I'm still angry about that. But he did it on his own merit. And this guy thinks he's entitled to that spot just because his old friend got there. Okay. For lack of a better term, he's the Trick Williams of, of his friend group. And now he started coming at me, he started coming at the king. Okay. What? Because he got one fluky win over me, and I'm trying to tell him, you know, you shouldn't. I'm trying to keep him humble, you know. You shouldn't expect to beat me every single time, because next time we face off, it'll be a different story. But he's bragging around there, ducking rematches against me. Okay? So last week, I screwed him over in his match. And now... He's trying to fight me, but he ain't gonna know fight with me because I'm here. I'm not going to SmackDown this week because I know that guy's there and he's a danger to the show. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm getting all prepped up because Angelo, you ain't gonna get the jump on me ever again. This thing between you and I, it ends when I say it does. Not when you say it does. 49. Um... Yeah, one thing I forgot to mention in the Chase U promo earlier on is, you know, as part of they're, they're these girls wanting to come and check out Chase U, they're like, hey, you know, we'd love to step into the ring with two of Chase U's very best. You know, if you're if you're got a money in the bank qualifier next week, yeah, there's no reason you can't face us tonight. So Fia Hale, of course, obliges, and she picks up the win, beating Zayda Steel in 7.43. 46 for Haley, 55 for Fia, 29 for Zayda, and a 20 for Kaya Singh. So yeah, next week, Fia Hale is a part of the Money in the Bank qualifying match. It is, um, I, I want to say Thea, Aaliyah, <laughs> hashtag bars, Thea, Aaliyah, and Piper Niven is the three women involved in that. We then cut backstage, Kayla Braxton is with Angelo Dawkins. He says, Kayla, you, oh, sorry, Angelo, you uh, want to get any uh, comments on what we heard from our comment up here earlier on tonight? 
he sure does think a lot of himself, huh? You know, Tez got a lot like this, you know, last year when he was the World Heavyweight Champion. I guess being a champion just sort of changes your mindset. I'd know, Kayla, because it happened to me when I became Intercontinental Champion. But I ain't ducking nobody, okay? After last week, I want a piece of Carmelo Hayes. So if he's too much of a chicken to show up here, maybe he'll be here next week and I'll see him man to man. Right there, we can solve this thing out like men. So yeah, big challenge made by Angelo Dawkins for next week's episode of SmackDown. We then cut back to the ring. Grayson Waller comes to the ring with Baron Corbin. He goes, right, I'm sick and tired, right? I'm sure you're sick of me coming out here moaning every single time. But this time I've got a valid criticism, right? Because when I had to get him money in the bank, you know... I had to face Ilya Dragunov to get in there. You know, that's a mad Russian bastard, lad. I ain't gonna be able to stop a mad dragon like that. Who do you think I am? Okay. But now, I'll come out here with my best friend Baron Corbin, and they say we've got a tag team match tonight. I wasn't prepared for a tag team match, you know. Me and Aaliyah, we're here tonight. You know, it was a nice drizzling day in Brooklyn. You know, nobody ever wants to be in Brooklyn. I didn't, want, I didn't plan date night in Brooklyn, because it fucking stinks, lad. But, <laughs> speaking of stinks... Corbin, and he goes, what, he goes, what's that you're wearing, he goes, oh, it's this new fragrance I found backstage, you know, you can go try some after the match if you want, but I don't care about no fragrance, lad, the only scent I need is the scent of a champion, the scent of victory, now bring our rops out here, it's Omos and Otis <laughs> making their tag team debut, Otis, I forgot to change his profile picture, but he, he is the, the OT look, you know, he's got the, the suit jacket, the glasses, the slick backed hair, you know, and he's teaming up with Mr. Tall and Sexy here tonight against Grayson Waller and Baron Corbin. And a 75 rated match. They do win their first match as a tag team. Omos pins Corbin with a choke slam. Grayson Waller abandons Baron Corbin. Because of course he does. Because <laughs> they may be sexy men, but um, they are also tall and dangerous, Otis and Omos. So he runs away. Omos pins Baron Corbin with a choke slam. And Mr. Tall and Sexy wins his first match with his new friend, Otis. 71 for Otis, 69 for Omos, 81 for Baron Corbin, and a 73 for Grayson Waller. <coughs> hear ye, hear ye. You are all cordially invited to the greatest moment in the history of WWE Smackdown. You see... For many, many weeks and months and even years, this brand has been ruled by pretend royalty and pretend great rebellious groups. While I say none of this reigns true, for there is only one true ruler of WWE. Not be her name, Io Sky. Not be her name, Dakota Kai. Be her name, the Queen, Charlotte Flair. We then cut backstage, Grayson Waller runs into his locker room, Aaliyah's there, you know. She's like in, in a robe, you know, been, she's been waiting for Grayson Waller so they can, you know, do some shit in their locker room. She goes, hey, hey, babe, you know, it's great to have you back out. He goes, we've got to go, lad. She goes, but I'm not dressed to leave this room. Because Baron Corbin was my partner tonight. And I sort of left him and uh, he's, he's pissed off and I think he's looking for me. And then we hear Corbin storm down the hallway. He goes, Grayson, Grayson. And Walla hides under the bedsheets. And then he storms in and then it's just Aliyah stood there in a robe. And an angry Baron Corbin storms in. She goes, have you seen Grayson anywhere? And she goes, uh, n No. Now I've been waiting for him to come back. Why? How did the tag match go? He goes, how did the tag match? He left me, huh? Your man left me high and dry because he's not loyal, huh? Soon you'll realize he's just stringing you along too, but I guess that's all you care about is being successful and being an arm piece, huh? And then Waller jumps out from under the bed. She goes, hey, you can talk about me all you want, lad. Don't you talk about my lovely sexy girlfriend like that, okay? And Corbin just laughs. goes, okay, okay, I see how it is. You're a dead man, Waller. You're a dead man. And he leaves. <laughs> Waller, like, peers his head out from behind a Leah. He was hiding behind her the whole time. And, oh, glad that got out. That nearly got out of hand. I could have... I almost had to kick his ass, lad. But 
grabby guys should de-escalate everything. Um, excuse me. 85 rating? Okay. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah. Selena Vega wins the match. She scores the pin on Yoko Uihara because Kyrie Sane comes in. You know, she she's trying to help Raquel, but it doesn't end well for her helping Raquel. And in the end, she does help Selena Vega. So yeah, Selena Vega scores the pin. She's in Money in the Bank. So it'll be Zelina joining Utami Hashishta, Blair Davenport, uh, Stephanie Vaker, Cora Jade, and Kelsey Cook in the Women's Money in the Bank ladder match. After the match, the four groups of four brawl. You know, Queendom, the Itchy Band girls are out there now, Raquel and Kyrie. And yeah, next week, the big eight woman tag team match will take place between these four teams, well, not four teams, two teams of four Queendom against. Raquel, Kyrie, Mako, and Aoi. So yeah, next week is a pretty stacked episode of SmackDown. The final SmackDown of 2020 is going out with a bang. Let's see if I can remember all the matches they've got set for the show. First of all, we have the final women's Money in the Bank qualifying match. It'll be Piper Niven, Fia Hale, and Aaliyah in triple threat action for a spot in Money in the Bank. And then on the men's side, it's going to be Big Jacob Fatu, Pete Dunne, and Angel Garza. For the final spot in the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We also have the challenge laid down on anyone tonight, accepted Carmelo Hayes and Angelo Dawkins one on one yet again on next week's episode of SmackDown. Plus, 4v4, the big Queendom versus Aoi Maikawa, Miko Sadamura, Kairi Sane, and Raquel Rodriguez tag team match that's been stemming for a couple of weeks now takes place on next week's show. Plus, two championship matches, both for the women. The Women's Tag Team Championships will be on the line as Tegan Knox and Piper Niven, who's pulling double duty, I've just realised. I should have maybe had her um, qualifying match go last week, but oh well, it's fine. Uh, we'll be defending against Morgan Daniels and Hans Katana of Chase U and DKE. Plus, Dakota Kai will defend her Women's World Championship against somebody. It's not going to be a member of the Liberators. And then, yeah, moving on to Money in the Bank, we learnt some new qualifications for that matches tonight as well on the men's side it'll be Andrade Cien Almas joining the field um, also featuring Ilya Dragunov, Chad Gable Jay White, Solo Sokoa and Adam Cole Bay Bay on the women's side Zelina Vega joins Utami Hayashishta, Cora Jade, Stephanie Vakur Blair Davenport and Kelsey Cook and in the tag team match uh, the Labyrinth join Pretty Deadly, the House of Black uh, the Fritz brothers or Amenzo Montez Ford. And we now know the World Heavyweight Championship will be defended at Money in the Bank. It will be Swerve Scott in a triple threat match against Bobby Lashley and Daniel Bryan. 85 rated tag match. Um, yeah. The finish here. Uh, Daniel Bryan and Swerve can't coexist, it turns out. Brian kicks him in the head, leaves him for dead, and Bobby Lashley actually pins the World Heavyweight Champion. Something that Drew McIntyre couldn't do, something that Sami Zayn couldn't do, Ilya Dragunov couldn't do. The Almighty has pulled off here tonight. Yeah. 92 for Daniel Bryan, 86 for Pete Dunne, 96 for Swerve, 77 for Ronnie Hughes, 67 for Damon Kemper, and 82 for Bobby Lashley. So yeah, I guess advantage Bobby heading into Money in the Bank. And that ends the show. Gets us an 89. Yeah, I'm as boys like you for the show. Do let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll see you on the other side for Velocity, where we've got the Trios Championship Tournament. Velocity's here. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Booty's been absolutely destroyed here. I don't know why the injuries are going so ham recently, but, oh, well, it's... Gonna sound horrible to say, but it is only Ryan Booty. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, and it is the ja NXT Japan trio of Yosuke Akatsuka, Rokuru Kobayashi, and Huang Lian, who are show. Oh, sorry, Yo, uh, Jason Lee, and I cannot remember this guy's actual name, but obviously I renamed them all for NXT Japan. Uh, yeah, Yosuke pins Ryan Booty of a five star clutch in 1519. 48 for Ryan Booty, who broke his neck. 61 for Lewis Booty, 72 for Ari Sterling. 
69 for Yosuke, 51 for Rukuru, and a 67 for Huang Lian. And yeah. I'm aware, Mickey. Sorry. But a 62 rated second match in this mini tournament. Um, it is the War Dogs, Dan Maloney, Clark Connors, and Gabe Kidd defeating RKJ, JJ Gale, and Riley Osborne, Dudley's kids, basically. But here it is the, the War Dogs who win. Gabe Kidd pins Riley Osborne in 14 12, sick kick. 47 for JJ Gale, 36 for Riley Osborne, 58 for RKJ, 56 for Gabe Kidd, 65 for Clark Connors, and a 51 for Dan Maloney. So yeah, Clark Connors the standout, the only non Englishman in the match. And yeah, we get a little buffer before the main event, which is the War Dogs against the Japanese guys. With a video package explaining high wires, you know, Ulma X rules. If you've seen the Ulma X, you know. If you if you haven't, well, like, what rock have you been living under? Like, like t 2010's TNA feels like everybody's experienced it at some point in their life. Like, everybody knows Ulma X. Like, even if, if a WWE were to do an Ulma X match tomorrow... All of their fans are like, oh yeah, well, I know that. That's the TNA match. <laughs> and a 70 rated main event. Um, it is the Japanese guys. It's guys from NXT Japan. Yosuke Akatsuka, Rokuru Kobayashi, and Huang Liang. Who earned the shot against the Dragon's Dojo on next week's show. The final velocity of TW2020. Uh, Huang Liang pins Dan Maloney with a sunset flip powerbomb. 68 for Huang. 51 for Kobayashi. 77 for Yosuke. 69 for Dan Maloney, 68 for Clark Connors, and a 56 for Gabe Kidd. So yeah, next week's Velocity Show will feature two championship matches. The trio's championship match between um, Lorcan, Gresham, and Rios against these three gentlemen. And then the High Wires main event, six-way for the Cruiserweight Championship. Which ties into the show, gets us a 67, it's fine. And of course, I'm as more like you for Q4 of the show, mainly of SmackDown. And I'll see you next time for Raw... The final roar before mining the bank and the final roar of TW 2020. See you then.